Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at TheEndTimeNews.org and today is November 14th, 2012. Tensions between Israel and the terrorist group Hamas have just exploded into war. The IAF recently struck and killed head of Hamas military wing Ahmad Jabari and his son while traveling in, a, in an automobile in central Gaza. The airstrikes marks the beginning of a campaign to target Hamas and Islamic Jihad terror organizations in Gaza. An IDF spokesman, Yoav Mordecai, said, The first aim of this operation is to bring back quiet to southern Israel, and the second target is to strike at terror organizations. Mordecai went on to describe Jabari as a man with a lot of blood on his hands. Jabari was directly responsible for carrying out terrorist attacks against Israel for the past several years, the Israeli Defense Forces said in a statement. Hamas said in a statement that the assassination has opened the gates of hell. The military operation in Gaza is a result of Hamas and its terrorist allies launching over 150 rockets and mortars from Gaza since last Saturday, causing damage to homes and factories. The Israeli government has warned over the past week that Israel would take steps to protect its people and its land. In recent days, both Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Ehud Barak announced Israel's determination to essentially do whatever was necessary in order to restore peace and quiet to its southern region. According to a report by Depkafal, Southern Israel is on high alert in expectation of furious Hamas reprisal for the loss of its leading terror strategists. Areas such as Gadara and Gan Yavne, which have escaped most missile attacks, may now be targeted. Israel may also expect repercussions from Cairo, since Jabari was a favorite of the ruling Muslim Brotherhood, and his death occurred the day after Egypt brokered a ceasefire in the missile offensive from Gaza. Hamas says the killing of its military leader has opened the gates of hell for all-out war with Israel. Ahmed Jabari was assassinated by an Israeli airstrike, which promises to mark the beginning of an Israeli-led offensive against Gaza. For more, let's cross now live to RT's Tom Barton. He's in Tel Aviv. Tom, tell us exactly what's happening. Hi there, Bill. A rapidly developing situation here. Uh, the latest developments that we've got for you. Uh, in just the last few minutes, Egypt has said it may uh, remove its ambassador uh, to Israel over these, over these strikes. It all goes back earlier, just a few hours, to uh, the killing of Ahmed Jabiri, uh, that is Hamas's uh, military head by a targeted air Israeli airstrike. Uh, and then that developed into uh, really quite intense bombing that's been going on over Gaza in the past few hours. Reports at the moment um, from uh, Palestinian officials say that nine have been killed and dozens wounded, uh, including uh, amongst those dead a seven-year-old girl. We've also got reports that Raid al attar another high-profile Hamas military figure, was killed in a separate targeted um, bombing attack that the Israelis have also hit an ammunition warehouse, well, what they call an ammunition warehouse inside Gaza, where a lot of rockets were stored. And uh, indeed, Hamas is not just um, taking this lying down, as well as some strong words. They've also been firing rockets into the south uh, of Israel. That, that bombardment of rockets continuing as well. So really, uh, nothing less than a war situation down there. Operation Pillar of Defense, uh, it's, it's been called, announced by the Israeli Defense Forces. They say that they're targeting not just Hamas, but other militant groups in Gaza, including Islamic rockets Jihad. Rockets explode near Egypt border. Four rockets fired at Israeli town on Egyptian border. Several exploded inside town, one near school. No injuries or damage reported. IDF suspects rockets fired from Sinai Peninsula. Four rockets were fired at an Israeli town on the Egyptian border on Wednesday. Several rockets in exploded inside the town, but no injuries or damage were reported. The Keller red alert did not sound. The defense establishment is checking wh where the rockets had been fired from, Sinai or the Gaza Strip. Security forces were called to the scene. A short while later, a mortar shell landed in an open area within the Eshkol Regional Council. There were no reports of injury or damage. Israel will act on Iran as it did in Iraq and Syria. 
Lieberman says public should trust decision makers with Tehran threat, accuses Abbas of trying to save himself with the UN bid. Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman said on Wednesday that Israel's handling of the Iranian threat will be the same act as actions taken against Iraq and Syria. Lieberman was referencing the 1981 Israeli strike on Iraq's Orser Iraq nuclear reactor and the 2007 attack on Syria's nuclear core at Deir el Zor. Israel has never officially acknowledged bombing the Syrian core, although it has been widely reported to have been behind the attack. Lieberman asserted that Israel knows how to act to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear bomb. The foreign minister said the public should leave the decision on how and when to act to decision makers. If you want to shoot, shoot. Don't talk, he added. The foreign minister was speaking to students at the Ariel University Center where he also asserted that the best defense against Gazan rocket attacks against southern Israel is IDF attacks on the Strip. Friends, we are living in the last days, and the events unfolding in the Middle East are prophesied in the Bible. The hatred of the Jews and Israel, the resulting tensions and inevitable conflict, the soon-to-come rapture, and the seven-year peace treaty implemented by the Antichrist, the breaking of the treaty after only three and a half years, the Battle of Armageddon, and ultimately, the return of Jesus Christ to the earth. These are indeed the last days, and it's time to wake up. Don't allow yourselves to be lulled into a false sense of security, but instead, face the reality of what's truly going on. The Bible tells us that there would be signs in the sun, moon, and the stars, signs in the heavens above and the earth below, wars and rumors of wars, distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear of those things which are coming upon the earth. I hope that people are paying attention. Just since 2012, we have had millions upon millions of fish dying in the seas and rivers, as well as turtles, dolphins, birds, and other creatures. The ice in Greenland melted in only four days. We've had phenomenal weather pattern changes and historic drought conditions, crazy earthquake swarms, and earthquakes in diverse places. We've even had earthquakes that go boom in the night, if you can believe that one. We've had multiple rivers, lakes, ponds, and even a sea turn blood red mysteriously. Then there's the multiple near-miss, life-altering asteroids that have recently passed by, with more being discovered all the time. The list of end-time signs goes on and on. We can deny it, rationalize it, ignore it, or recognize that there is a God in heaven, who is the creator of all things created. He does have a plan for salvation, but you must accept it. Are you saved? Follow the link below and pray the prayer of salvation with a sincere heart and you will be saved. It is my prayer that God blesses each and every one of you with ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, amen.